Hey everybody, it's Scott. I'm back again with another video. I wanted to share with you some awesome news um, this week, um, or today at least. Um, for those of you who know me, you know that I really enjoy the Greenwood Tarot by Mark Ryan and Cheska Potter. And I just recently found a copy of the Greenwood Tarot um, and regained that probably within the last month. And so I wanted to archive it. And I wanted to keep it for a while, so I uh, my idea was to read from it um, only on those eight holidays of the Wheel of the Year, the solstices, equinoxes, and the cross-quarter days. Well, I, I did a, a webinar, and a lot of people really liked the Greenwood Tarot and because of the artwork and um, some of the images and some of the things that were evoked from the reading. So I thought, ah, oh, wouldn't it be great if like I could find another deck that I could just do for everyday reading. And so, um, interestingly enough, the same person who sold me this um, box set, complete with the book um, by Cheska Potter and Mark Ryan, and the Wheel of the Year chart that comes with the, um, the Greenwood Tarot. So it gives you this whole chart inside um, with the Wheel of the Year, which cards correspond to which holidays on the Wheel of the Year, and um, the Sixes, Sevens, Eights, Aces, how they correspond. So it's a great chart that's in here, too. And they had a totally different system than um, the Companion. Well, not totally. The Companion one, the one that um, is now in print, is the Wildwood Tarot. And this is by Mark Ryan and John Matthews with art with Will Worthington, which I just love. Um, but there are just some interesting things that that were in the Greenwood Tarot that I just missed and that I thought brought out a lot more interesting readings for me and the artwork just inspired me in, in a different way. So interestingly, the person who sold me this whole Greenwood Tarot box set um, approached me and said, hey, I have just a standalone deck and it's still in the shrink wrap, but I don't have the book, would you be willing to buy it? And I said, I considered it, and I jumped at it. So um, this is the Greenwood Tarot deck that I received today from um, a woman named Eva. And you can see the shrink wrap is still on it. It's an open shrink wrap, but the shrink wrap is still on it. And I'm going to keep this set and put it in my box um, with the shrink wrap so that it's preserved and read from the ones that I've already read from. So this will be really great as an archive so that I can keep this pristine and um, have a really good collector's version of it. And I really love how Eva sent me a note as well inside the box. She and I shared information. I just um, told her my my reasoning for it, and she said, "Scott, may you have the sight of the saints." Thank you always, Eva. So her letter to me with the receipt, and I thought that was just so great because she I shared with her my story and my story of like um, regaining some of my Christian faith and Celtic background and trying to merge that and actually be that embodiment of um, Celtic and um, pagan and Christianity kind of merging and melding and being peaceful coexistors. So that's what I really want to bring through. Actually, I'm going to keep her note in with everything too. So, so I am going to be reading from the Greenwood Tarot on a regular basis now. So I also wanted to just introduce you to some of the cards. I know I haven't really gone through a, a whole run through to show you the Greenwood Tarot, Cheska Potter is the artist of the Greenwood Tarot, and it's one of the most popular decks that if you can get your hands on it. It's been out of print since 1996, and um, there are lots of stories, and I don't know which are true, that Cheska Potter changed her spirituality. Perhaps she became a born-again Christian. There are other stories um, that she left, and she kind of disappeared because of her health. But for whatever reason, there was a time at least that I can find between 2008 and 2012, where um, even her closest friends didn't know where she was and that she actually had kind of drifted into anonymity 
purposefully. Whatever reason she did that, um, I, I believe it is her right. And if she does have some sort of a spiritual journey or ch um, change, that's her right too. And I think that it's beautiful. Um, as someone who has had his own journey, I find her cards very evocative, even from this Christian point of view, and also this melding of the Christian and the Celtic traditions melding together and peacefully coexisting. I really love it. And if she ever comes back, I hope that someday, if she did kind of convert to Christianity and felt that her artwork wasn't viable, I hope that someday she'll find the space to come back where she'll find that integration where, yes, it is viable. And it is, um, there can be a peaceful coexistence. So I find that there's a great coexistence. So let me show you some of the cards that, um, that I love in the Greenwood Tarot. The first one is the Ancestor. This is also portrayed in the in the Wildwood Tarot, but I like this Ancestor that because of, you've seen my other videos, the light that's shining down. And this light shining down, it's sort of like it's coming from Source or a star. And so to me, that really gives you that idea of universal source. The footprints, um, you don't see those in the Wildwood Tarot. The footprints are representative of, you know, the caribou or a migration of animals, people who have walked those footsteps for many generations and many, many years. And so our ancestor is the first card in this system. Um, Whereas in the other set, the Wildwood Terror, the Seer, is the first card. The Ancestor is what calls upon this path and um, initiates you into this process. And she's between two birch trees. I love that. And it's a winter scene. So again, with this little light coming down, you actually see this on the back of the cards, too, with this Celtic shaman, this pre-Celtic shaman with antlers too, as he, as he is learning the craft from his ancestor and also receiving light from source. So, and he draws on his drum all of the things of his journey. I love that about this deck and about this card. Some other different things is that the horse is the king of stones. In um, the Wildwood, they have demoted the horse to the, the page. I really like this horse as the King of Stones because if you read parts of the book Wild Magic, I have that here. In this Wild Magic book, it's a companion book to the Wildwood Terror. There are some um, some areas too where they talk about Cheska. She um, is talked about in this book and how when they were at the area, um, there's a there's a sand. Um, monument sculpture that you can see from the air of a horse in Britain and she actually meditated from that point inside the eye and so many times you'll see I don't know if you can see how close it if I'll bring this in there's this little eye right above my finger and that's the eye of the horse and so you'll see all all the time in this deck you'll see this eye repeated and repeated in different cards and so this horse being the king of stones, the king of, um, you know, all things creative and magic, that, that to me just makes so much more sense, you know, based on the meditations and the things that are linked inside the Wild Magic book that talk about Cheska. These, these cards are so linked that I created my own card. Um, the Wildwood Tarot, you get an extra card that has, like, the information that says Wildwood Tarot on it. And so I created a new card with it, with um, just some artwork from Cheska's, um, the front I pasted on, the, the, um, the back cover of the Greenwood Tarot, and then on the other side, I put in her um, gender-neutral um, animal lover's card. This was a card, an image that was rejected by the publisher, and so... I'm going to use this card whenever I read from either of those decks, and whenever I bring up the Lover's card, that means I'm going to pull from the other deck, because I do believe that these two decks are linked energetically. And so this, um, I received a, an image of this from Cheska back when she was selling it for a dollar, and she said, you can, you can paste this on your Lover's card if you want and change this to the non-gendered Lover's. So um, not available anymore. You can find it on the internet. 
but I paid a dollar for it from Cheska's site back in the 90s. And so I'm using that and I'm pasting it on top of the extra card that's inside the Wildwood Tarot. And so this is my bonus card, and I'm keeping it handy whenever I do readings. So if a lover's card ever comes up in either deck, that means I pull a card from the opposite deck because I believe that they are joined. So, so there's that, and I also want to keep going with the Greenwood Tarot. The Knight of Cups is the Salmon. You'll see this also in the Wildwood Tarot, but I really like how Cheska, if I zoom in a little more, the Salmon has a hazelnut in its mouth, and it will drop the hazelnut into the cup. So this, there are like lots of legends in Celtic tradition about the hazelnut being the nut of knowledge, and so um, the salmon will have that and drop that in your cup, and if you ingest that hazelnut, um, you know, you'll have all the knowledge of the world. So, so it's a little more thorough to me. So it's a, um, a cup that the salmon will deposit the hazelnut. And the hazelnut's missing from the Wildwood Tarot. The Queen of Stones is the bear in the Greenwood Tarot. Um, in the Wildwood, she's, the I think, the king. Um, but I like this because this bear is also kind of holding on to old bones, too. So to me, it also symbolizes grief, loss. Um, there isn't really a grief card or an embodiment of a card that's more of a grief, but yet a recovery from grief. So I really like this bear as the Queen of Stones. Um, you know, she holds on to ancestors and old relatives and old bones because death is only a condition. And we have, um, you know, perhaps it was the brother or sister to this little cute little cub. I don't know. But that's what speaks to me with this. The seer in Cheska's deck um, is an owl, but actually you can see that it is the shaman wearing an owl suit. So if I cover up this owl, you'll see the face of the shaman facing that way. And so it's it's a nice disguise for the seer, and the seer is kind of the shapeshifter of other animals that you'll see in this deck here as well. So um, I love the seer card. I actually like the seer in the Wildwood as well. Um, she evokes some different Im images for me. She evokes this um, very um, kind of like um, the river, like Boan and the River Boyne. Um, when you see, look into the, the well of knowledge, um, she's this female who wasn't allowed, but she's doing it. And then the waters chase you, creating the River Boyne. I love that story. It's a story, I believe, if you can find it in, like, Yearning from the, for the Wind from Tom Cowan. And so that's with the seer in the Wildwood. Um, she's on the cover of Wild Magic. So the seer from the Wildwood, that's what she evokes for me. And so I like her, too. Um, but she's also the first card in the Wildwood. The seer doesn't come for a while in the Greenwood. The strength card. This is a card that's not in... The Wildwood Tarot, and I love this image, and I love the explanation that Cheska gives. She has an online um, explanation of her cards. This strength card talks about just the strength of mind and strength of person, but you notice this um, cat-like being is holding this cup, and it takes a lot of strength to hold our emotions, and sometimes strength is in letting go. Letting go of that cup, or that... that um, that which we've been holding on to for so long and letting it go and putting it down. So that's another aspect of strength that I read from with this deck. I love that card. The Page of Cups, the Kingfisher. Um, there is a Kingfisher card in the Wildwood Tarot, but it's a it's just in flight. This Kingfisher is giving a gift. There's a little um, minnow in his beak and he's dropping it into your cup. And so this kingfisher always, to me, signifies a gift from somewhere else that you have no under no understanding of, no clue. It's just it's it's grace embodied, and and I love the kind of the the etheric light coming from the wings. So all sorts of Cheska's artwork and cards have this aspect where there's an aura of light around um, the animals, and in the Wildwood Tarot, I love the artwork by Will Worthington, but you just don't see that very often this etheric light quality where it's 
we are spirits and we are an embodiment of an animal on earth. So that's the Kingfisher. The Hermit card. This is my favorite card because, um, well, the embodiment of the card because I feel like it's my card. This is me. Um, I like the Wildwoods art on this a little better. Um, but also this Hermit card, you can see sort of in this that um, above the door, the wreath has a little wheel of the year. And I like this. It's in winter and, and the wren. The wren keeps secrets um, around the solstice and the, the time between darkness and light. But I love the the hermit card. This is also called the hooded man in the uh, Wildwood Tarot. But I like the hermit aspect. The Wildwood, I like the art a little better for this, but a great card. The Wheel of Fortune in the Greenwood is a lot more mystical. Um, in the Wildwood, it's shown as a shirt and it's um, kind of woven. This is more of like a, you've encountered the theater of the woods, and um, come spin the wheel in this um, kabuki theater crazy place that you've just encountered. You've crossed the veil into dreamland. So um, this Wheel of Fortune just evokes a lot of different kinds of imagery for me. It almost feels like theater. It's like, go spin the wheel, but you're going to have your own fate anyway. But have fun. Spin the wheel, see what happens. Um, you know, don't get addicted to the dream of trying to attain fate. Um, the World Tree. This is also in the Wildwood Tarot. But I like this one because the World Tree has the light coming down. You can see this, the light from Source. And it's also in the middle of this um, traditional labyrinth. In the Wildwood Tarot, the labyrinth comes first and then you go into the World Tree. This one, the World Tree is in the center of the labyrinth. Really great image. The Shaman. This is my favorite shaman. The other shaman in the, the Wildwood Tarot is this very kind of spooky old man who's like really conjuring everything. He's got a long white beard and, um, you know, he's deep in a trance and his eyes are really buggy and he's just, you know, he's conjuring magic out on a cliff somewhere or in a cave. This shaman is a little bit gender neutral to me. And they also kind of look at you very, you know, not really positive or negative, but just a plain look. And they look like they could be somebody from the community, somebody that you would interact with, you know, on a regular basis. And so I like this shaman card because of that. It's a, an approachable, accessible shaman. It's not some old man with a white beard acting crazy in on a cliff um, in a cave, you know, so... I like the shaman a lot better. The archer. This is a great card because um, in the wildwood, you see the archer aiming downward and forward. This archer is aiming upwards, and her arrow is just sailing, casting magic against the skies, showing the first wave of something magical that's about to happen. Love this archer card. The image of this woman just shooting into the wind and... Um, you know, casting her magic. It's great. The Knight of Stones in this deck is the wolf, and there is no wolf in the Wildwood Tarot, which I was so missing it, because this also talks about the knights are, you know, the first um, in the courts. They are one of the first images of, like, power, but this also talks about the misuse of power and how wounded we can feel. So this juxtaposition of, um, you know, a wild warrior knight and also this victim who's wounded because you don't ever want to encounter a wounded wolf and just the the embodiment of the two of those aspects of the wolf just bring out so much um it's a great card to bring up another card that's great that's not in the wildwood is the reindeer card and i love 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 when i get this card especially around Christmas time or the solstice, because to me, these reindeer represent long journeys and reunification with someone you love. You know, the caribou and the reindeer, like, they migrate around our planet, and they're, they're often contained, and they often um, don't, their habitats dwindle, 
And just to see these two reindeer coming together again, it just evokes this air of reconciliation, of reuniting, and of just a peaceful... The stars are also watching them. The stars between the antlers again. Just, it's like a blessed reconciliation, reunification moment. You know, this blessing in the middle of winter. The deer is also not in, the Queen of Arrows is not in the Wildwood Tarot. Just this pure feminine energy, the white deer. If you ever um, know the Native American stories of the, the coming and returning of the white animals and the white deer being born, it's just a beautiful, fabulous story. And again, just the backdrop, this etheric energy and the, the antlers going forth into the sky. The Fool is a lot of fun. This is a fun card. I like the Wildwood Fool as well, because the Wildwood Fool is just your their backs turned to us and walking on a rainbow. But this Fool has a plan. She has like fashioned her wings. If you look close enough, she's got little handles on her wings. And there's a labyrinth in the middle of that butterfly wing, so she has she has conjured up a plan. So there's um I, I want to make a blog post that says two fools walk into a bar. The fool who has um you know who has created the master plan to jump off the cliff and the fool who has no idea what's going on. They're both fools. Um because their fate's just going to wait for them no matter what. But I like this fool. She is just total embodiment. And I'm just going to jump off and I'll, I've will i got my wings. We'll see what happens. The Lover's Card in the um, Greenwood Tarot. It's okay. Um, it's a little, People say it, it strikes a little Egyptian feel to it. Um, you know, it's a little more sexualized to me. But I um, actually like how the, um, the headdress of the woman is actually a hummingbird. So if you zoom in a little close here, this is actually a hummingbird. On the top of her head and the feathers coming down so um i like the lover's card but it's it's not necessarily my favorite um the forest lovers in the wildwood is okay as well um and that's why i really like the idea of a gender neutral forest lovers card i wish they would have put that back in the wildwood but they didn't they made choices it's okay um the lynx the lynx is the King of Arrows in the Greenwood. And I, again, we have that light coming down. Um, the King of Arrows in the Lynx, I, I think it's so appropriate because the Lynx is a huge symbol I've learned in the Hermetic um, tradition. So, um, And recently, from what I understand, there was a rare sighting of a Lynx in an urban area in Britain, and they haven't seen an, um, a Lynx in this area for centuries. So... Um, really interesting. I like the lynx and the baby lynx, and I think it's appropriate for the king. And whenever I read from the Wildwood and read this as the Page of Arrows, I often just say, well, I'm promoting this to the king. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. I love this king of arrows. The balance card in the Greenwood, wonderful. This is like seahorses. Seahorses and the light splitting into three, like the Awen, the source, um, the making, the maker, and you. So, um, to me, I like this balance card better because I'm not really a reptile person. Think of that however you want to think of it. But I'm not really into reptilian beings. So, um, I've never really liked snakes personally. So, um, so I like that this is these are seahorses. And um, the image of the horse again, the eye of the horse um, coming up again. So, um... And just the colors of this card of balance um, really, really bring it alive for me. The last card I'll show you in the Greenwood is the home card, the Ten of Stones. And um, there's a home card in the Wildwood as well. But I like that this home card has the tree growing out that has fruit. The tree has fruit in it. So um, in the Wildwood, the tree is spewing from the home doesn't have any fruit. So just some differences in um, in the feel for me. And I, I wish they would have reprinted this Greenwood Tarot, but of course Chaska's artwork is in, it's still in um, copyright. 
they did the best that they could, and I think they picked the greatest artist in Will Worthington. Some of the cards in the Wildwood Tarot just just pull you. And so the Wildwood is still my number two deck. And so, um, of course, the Greenwood is my favorite deck, then the Wildwood, and then all sorts of the other cards that I'm rediscovering again. So that's a walk through the Greenwood for you. And um, I'm going to be reading from it daily now. Now that I have this wonderful gift, uh, well, not gift, but I paid for it, this wonderful opportunity that I um, have a deck that I can preserve and the book and the chart that I can preserve, and now I have a deck as well that I can, can work with. So, um, yeah, if you ever have something you like, you'll spend your money on it, I guess. So, um, some people buy baseball cards some people buy magic decks or in cards i seem to buy out of print tarot cards so um hope you like this video leave a comment um hit like or subscribe so um i'll make more videos for you and again thank you so much for joining me i'm scott have a great day namaste